Hello, welcome back to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou and today I'm going to share with you some Christian historical fiction books that have won awards in the last few years. There are a few different award um, schemes, systems that are running. Uh, there's the Christie's, the Carol Awards, the Inspees, I'm sure there are other ones as well. I've taken a list of the um, most recent historical fiction novels and I will do, I think, 10 books today and then and some more next month. If you've missed any of the previous videos in this series, I will link the playlist down below so that you can um, check those out. I've done uh, contemporary romance ones as well as mystery and suspense novels and I will be continuing throughout this uh, this year so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss those. I wrote 10 books to talk about today. Um, I think I, I've read three of these um, so I'll give my thoughts on those as we come to them but I'm just going to read a little bit of the description from each one. The White Rose Resists by Amanda Barrett won a Christie Award in 2021. Inspired by the incredible true story of a group of ordinary men and women who dared to stand against evil, the ideal of a new Germany swept up Sophie Scholl in a maelstrom of patriotic fervour that is until she realised the truth behind Hitler's machinations for the fatherland. Now she and other students in Munich, the cradle of the Nazi government, have banded together to form a group for, to fight for the truth, the White Rose. Risking everything to print and distribute leaflets, calling for Germans to rise up against the evil permeating their country, the White Rose treads a knife's edge of discovery by the Gestapo. Wow, there's some <laughs> tricky words to pronounce today. Things We Didn't Say by Amy Lynn Green won two Carol Awards in 2021. Headstrong Johanna Berglund, a linguistic student of the University of Minnesota, has very definite plans for her future, plans that do not include returning to her hometown and the secrets and heartaches she left behind there, but the US Army wants her to work as a translator at a nearby camp for German POWs. Johanna arrives to find the once sleepy town exploding with hostility. Most patriotic citizens want nothing to do with German soldiers labouring in their fields and they're not afraid to criticise those who work at the camp as well. Portrait of Loyalty by Rosanna M. White won a Christie Award in 2021. This is a book that I have read and actually was my favourite book from last year that I've read last year. So um, I definitely enjoyed this one. Zivon Marin was one of Russia's top cryptographers until the October Revolution tore apart his world. Forced to flee to England after speaking out against Lenin, Zivon is driven by a growing anger and determined to offer his services to the Brits. Never far from his mind is his brother, who Jivon fears died in the train crash that separated them. Lily Blackwell sees the world best through the lens of a camera and possesses unsurpassed skill when it comes to retouching and recreating photographs. With her father's connections in propaganda, she's recruited to the intelligence division, even though her mother would disapprove if she ever found out. Like Flames in the Night by Connie Lynn Cassette won a Carol Award in 2021. Strong-willed Terza wants to join her people in driving the enemy from the land of Israel and undergoes training for a secret mission inside the stronghold of Shechem. But soon after she has infiltrated the ruthless Aramean commander's kitchen, she makes a reckless decision that puts her and her allies in grave danger. Fresh off the battlefield, Liam returns home to discover his beloved daughter is dead. After his vow to hunt down her killer leads to months of fruitless pursuit, his last hope is in a family connection that comes with strings attached, strings that force him to pose as a mercenary and rescue an infuriating woman who refuses to leave her, her mission uncompleted. The next two books are books that made it onto my um, favourites list. So Whose Waves, these are by Amanda Dykes, won two Christie Awards in 2020. In the wake of World War II, a grieving fisherman submits a poem to a local newspaper, a rallying cry for hope, purpose and rocks. 
Send me a rock for the person you lost, and I will build something life-giving. When the poem spreads farther than he ever intended, Robert Bliss's humble words change the tide of a nation. Boxes of rocks inundate the tiny coastal main town, and he sets his calloused hands to work, but the building halts when tragedy strikes. Decades later, Annie Sawyer is summoned back to Ansel by the sea when she learns her great-uncle Robert, the man who became her refuge during the hardest summer of her youth, is now the one in need of help. The Painted Castle by Christy Cambron won a Christie Award in 2020. It was supposed to be a one-week job, survey an, survey an art find, collect a hefty fee and use that to settle historian Kira Foley's life back into balance. But from the moment she sets foot in the East Suffolk, East Suffolk countryside, the mysteries surrounding the old English manor and the enigmatic art thief who's employed her stir more questions than answers. Set in three time periods, the rapid change of Victorian England, the tumultuous skies over England's eastern shores in World War II and modern day, the painted castle unfolds a legacy of faith, family and stories that are generations in the making. Becoming Mrs Lewis by Patty Callahan won two Christie Awards in 2019. When poet and writer Joy Davidman began writing letters to C.S. Lewis, known as Jack, she was looking for spiritual answers, not love. Love, after all, wasn't holding together her crumbling marriage. Everything about New Yorker Joy seemed ill-matched for an Oxford don and the beloved writer of Narnia, yet their minds bonded over their letters. Embarking on the adventure of her life, Joy travelled from America to England and back again, facing heartbreak and poverty, discovering friendship and faith against all odds, finding a love that even the threat of death couldn't destroy. Shelter of the Most High by Connie Lynn Cassette won a Christie Award in 2019. The daughter of a pagan high priest, Sophia finds solace from her troubles in the freedom of the ocean, but when marauders attack her village on the Isle of Sicily, she and her cousin are taking across the sea to the shores of Canaan. Eitan has lived in Kadesh, a city of refuge for the last 11 years, Haunted by a tragedy in his childhood, yet chafing at the boundaries placed on him, he is immediately captivated by Sophia, but revealing his most guarded secret could mean drawing her into the danger of his past. The Solace of Water by Elizabeth Byler Younts won a Carol Award in 2019. After the loss of her young son Carver, an African-American preacher's wife named Delilah Evans moves with her family from Montgomery, Alabama, to Sinking Creek, Pennsylvania, for a fresh start. The last thing she could have imagined was becoming friends with Emma Mullet, a reclusive, Am a reclusive Amish woman. Emma is fighting personal battles of her own and feels estranged from her small Amish community. The secrets that have kept her isolated from her own community serve to unite her in an unlikely friendship with Delilah. Sparrow, Delilah's eldest daughter, knows she is responsible for the death of her little brother, when tensions at home become unbearable, she seeks solace in Emma's, at Emma's house, becoming the surrogate daughter Emma has always wanted. Sparrow, however, is hiding secrets of her own, secrets that could sever all ties to her safe refuge. I think that book is set in the 1950s, so these books cover quite a, a wide range um, from the biblical eras to um, kind of modern historical with this pledge by Tamara Alexander, won a Christie Award in 2019. On the night of November 30th, 1864, a brutal battle in Franklin, Tennessee, all but decimates the Confederacy and nearly kills Captain Roland Ward Jones. A decorated Mississippi sharpshooter, Jones has a vision on the battlefield and, despite the severity of his wounds, believes his life will be spared, but a life without his leg he can't abide. He compels Elizabeth Lizzie Clouston, governess to the Mc... governess to the McGavert family in at the Canton Mansion, to intervene with should the surgeon decide to amputate. True to her word, Lizzie speaks on his behalf and saves not only the captain's leg but also his life. So there's a ten. Uh, Christian historical fiction novels that have won awards. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of them or can recommend them or not, whichever, however you um, reacted to them. As I said, I've read three of those books myself and have enjoyed um, enjoyed all three of those. 
If you found something useful in today's video, please do give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Click the notification bell if you want to be notified when I post a new video. Um, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have a really great reading week and until next time, God bless. Bye.